On my previous video I've haphazardly put up, I talk about a case for what causes us to believe there's a Big Bang. I'm going to synopsize it. Everywhere you look in the universe that you're not pointing at a star, whether it's an invisible or visible one, if you just do a standard survey where you just look everywhere, everywhere you don't see a typical set of spikes and peaks that indicate it's a, a blue star or a red star or a yellow one like ours, you get this very even coating of radio signals that peaks at one millimeter, goes up, peaks at a millimeter, and it curves off really smoothly in this curve that is called a black body radiating curve. This is a lot like the bell curve in uh, Jurassic Park that was a naturally occurring curve that you expect to find in natural systems. This only occurs only this almost perfectly mathematically if you have an en energy source that's emitting something and it's tapering off because the frequency as you get higher and higher frequencies it releases steadily a different intensity level because the higher frequency vibrations of the electromagnetic spectrum effectively chew up some of the energy in favor of being that color. So in the previous video I commented on the idea that this would match up with if it was our star this signal would have been divided, by, divided down to 2,000 times a lower frequency or made the wavelengths 2,000 times longer. Now that sounds like a lot. That's like, oh, you're slowing down light 2,000 times? No, it shifts the frequency of it and there's a specific set of reasons for it, but we haven't even gotten to that theory yet. What someone noticed is it's almost exactly 2,000 times a lower frequency than what the sun puts out and it matches the curve almost perfectly. Even the sun has more dips and devils in it. It's a perfect black body radiator in which you would expect to find in nature but there's only a few of them you really find because that would require nearly ideal conditions which confuse the hell out of everybody also it's in the microwave radiation range which doesn't make any damn sense because that should be getting filtered and interacted with all over the place but then again we're looking on purpose into dead space in some cases literally places where we still can't detect anything but we detect this and the idea here is it has a red shift from, let's say, a star, like our sun. But what if it wasn't? You see, in order for this kind of light to transfer through time space, if it was light, and it was coming from something like a star, like the sun, and if we're able to see it coming from everywhere, that means we're inside of something that went bang. That's the idea of it. Well, let's try another thing. How hot would it have to be to put off that much energy? so hot that it would not be able to emit the energy that we're seeing because once you get above a certain temperature level matter doesn't matter anymore it doesn't work it for it it fails it it, it forgets how to ma it forgets how to matter it forgets how to being physically solid matter even neutrons and protons break down it's so hot that atoms can't hold together so you literally have this pea soup of electrons and all sorts of crap going on in fact maybe even antimatter it's so hot, in fact, and the, and the material is spread out so thinly that it is just pressurized enough that you could hear it if you could survive it long enough to hear the shock waves. You'd hear this noise. No, I'm not kidding. It was literally acoustic capable. The other thing about it is it was literally opaque. Even though it's bright as hell, you wouldn't be able to see through it because literally everything in time space that light likes to go through is a total lack of matter. There wasn't enough empty space for light to travel through. Also wasn't really happening is, if you're not aware of it, even though that's a lot of material converted into the components for making matter, protons and neutrons weren't really around at one point, which meant the universe was expanding and did not have any gravitational pull, most likely at least not really. You see, the matter has to coalesce into something in order to even be gravitationally active. Gravity wasn't working. The universe was expanding at an extreme rate and not being slowed down. What slowed it down was, eventually, it cooled. How cool does it have to be so that you could have a signal like this, even if it was beyond light frequency? What temperature would it have to drop to before it would be transparent enough you could see it billions of years later. Well, 
I started off using the sun as an example. It has a peak frequency that tapers off in a nice curve towards the high frequency on this end of your graph here. It tapers off at, uh, it starts at 50 nanometers or one half micrometer. 2,000 times that is one millimeter, so you get your one millimeter curve, okay. But the trouble is, that also corresponds to a temperature that's nearly double what you need to have before it's transparent. The sun is not transparent. It blocks light from behind it. Because it does. It doesn't even let the light from the core of it get out. So here we go. Buckle up. <clears throat> a black body, let's review, is an idealized physical body that absorbs all incident electromagnetic radiation regardless of frequency or angle. But the energy is wavelength dependent when it emits it. That's it. It could be anything. It could be literally black paint. It will have a habit of what little energy it releases doing that. And you can also have just a bright source that does the same thing. If it matches, that's fine. But those are usually dependent, like most stars have a hydrogen line, for instance, because it's primarily hydrogen and helium. This curve didn't have that. Not really, anyway. The universe, approximately a second after its formation, was nearly an ideal black body in thermal equilibrium at a temperature above 10 to the 10th power K. Not, not the temperature we need on the surface of the sun. So what, what, what are you doing here? Well, let's look at some things. A very common atomic element in space is hydrogen. And when it's excited to a plasma state, it creates lines. This doesn't have it, at least not really. The spectrum of originally features less light shown through hydrogen. What? excuse me. The spectrum of originally, well, anyway, it'll show a signature of spectrum that matches hydrogen gas that you can do in a room. Now, this would have little spikes at regular intervals. Okay, So it creates kind of a barcode pattern for that element. And they can overlay each other, and you can actually cipher out which ones are which most of the time. Hydrogen is so common, you assume it's there and subtract it. Now... <coughs> For everything except really near galaxies, the observed redshift of something moving away from you comes almost entirely from the expansion of the universe we're detecting. Because while doing experiments trying to find out where everything is, we notice beyond a certain point, things might go away a little faster or slower, but they're always going away. Why would they move that way? And why was it so regular and predictable, and at some points, scary fast? It's not from relative motion of objects or spell, special relativistic anything. Well, it is, kind of. The value of this cosmological redshift indicates the recession velocity of the object as its distance, in most cases. If you take that into account, you can flatten out the universe's regression away from us and figure out where things really are. The other part about this is what it indicates is the universe itself is stretching out time space so it distorts how long light seems to have gone through, shifting it. And the other part of this is, if you compensate for that by just assuming distance and, and figuring it out, you can figure out where something really is. But, this is mostly dependent on us looking at stars, figuring out their actual color spectrum, figuring out where the notches are, and figuring out how much shift it is, and then using that to compensate so we can figure out really where they are. It's sort of like having a lens that distorts their position. Anyway, the color temperature of the sun, the main peak, is assumed to be at 3K. We'll just call it K. It has to be half that or you can't see it. So instead of 2,000 to 1 on your ratio that causes this redshift to happen, it's about 1,000 to 1. 1,000 times lower frequency. That means a very long distance away is the true origin even if you get something that appears to be pretty close or right next door. It's the effect of these noises bouncing around in time space for an insanely long period of time, as long as it's existed, possibly. Add to that the fact that at the beginning of the universe, matter hadn't turned into something that could literally create a gravitational pull necessarily. Maybe not, maybe. But the universe expanded very suddenly. It would look like this. Here's your pinpoint. It expands suddenly to here and then it levels off and then expands at a lower rate. The sudden inflation period causes a very definitive distortion in what you observe. Now let's go on to the next part. 
the boundary of the observable universe, which is distorted by the universe itself warping like a badly focused lens. The maximum distance from which particles could have traveled, light, particles, anything, to the observer in the real age of the universe is called the particle horizon. It has a radius that is listed as being 46 billion light years away, even though the universe is only 13 some odd. The 13.8 billion year age of the universe approximately, with the times the speed of light, isn't what you use. But it is where you figure out you're being basically fooled. Due to the expansion of the universe mucking this up, this conformal time of 4.6 billion years is simply what you measure from what you observe, and then you can figure out how much distortion you've dealt with. And at some distances, that can be checked, partially, you notice it very suddenly increases or slows back down. That's for another video, and for a lot of other sources, and I may not have enough room in the description to put them all in. This will be duplicated below from the previous video. The amount of time it would take a particle of light, or a wave, to travel from where we are located to the furthest observable distance provided the universe ceased expanding is the same number. Because it keeps moving and expanding, you end up having to do this really complicated math. Now I'm going to have some comments in a minute. As it conforms to the universe warping the distance and also in this way disrupting it and distorting it in it having frequency shifts. <clears throat> this is like a train coming towards you and going away. Lots of things in the universe produce a blue shift. They appear to be blue tinted. They have all of their absorption and emission lines in the wrong location. The barcode signature for a star just like ours is in the wrong location. It could be up or down. <clears throat> what was noticed is when you could test the distance by doing stereoscopic imaging by waiting till the Earth is over here, waiting for half a year and wait till it's over here and test, you would detect very slight red or blue shifts of these line spectra going in and out of phase. And you could figure out how far away they were and then use them for doing the, the shift, as well as our solar system and our planet going around the outside edge of our galaxy over a period of time, which we've been able to figure out, we can use that to observe these as well. And of course, other objects even further out that seem to almost be behind the fixed star background, we're able to detect and estimate things. And it's estimated. You can't do this with one method, so there have to be others. There's a bunch of them. I can't even go into the rest of them because I'm not qualified. I have to go learn them again. I learned them at one time. But the main thing that was found out, and this is why this video, these two videos had to be made. <coughs> no matter where you point a radio receiver or a microwave antenna, feed horn, or even a telescope, you run into this weird curve that only matches the emission from something burning at a very high temperature, like a star. But it was missing the characteristics that would say it was a normal star. And it was at a wrong frequency. There aren't any black body radiators we know of that work in the microwave range or infrared range that would cause this. It just doesn't work that way. Not really. The only thing that would cause that is something that has no absorption or emission lines and just produces noise. Pure, perfect noise. That curve is hypothetically perfect. It shouldn't actually be able to happen. And there it is. And it's only findable, clearly, where there aren't any stars to see. The only thing out there, in between those spaces, and we've looked really hard in many of them, is literally just the universe itself making that noise. The only way they could do it is at one time, a very long time ago, it produced energy emissions at about half the intensity of heat of the sun, which makes no sense, unless that's when it cooled down. It had to cool down enough so that it would be able to emit it because the energy would keep getting recycled because at that point the universe didn't really contain any solid matter until that moment. Everything was now condensing into something heavy enough to put the brakes on to slow down the expansion of the universe. And it had to do it mostly because of a defect that formed randomly. There's a very modeled set of pictures you can look at of what the universe looks like at that outer edge. It's the outer edge that we can detect it from. It's a shock wave. A big one. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that.